helicopters, 401 Cobra attack helicopters and 5 twin-engine turboprop C-12 Beechcraft planes for troop transport and medical evacuation, according to an Army colonel familiar with the acquisition project, but who declined to be named because he was not authorized to speak to the press. These are second-hand aircraft but are still operational the Army colonel told the Philippine Star. These are offered free, but we have to shoulder the cost of some repairs and shipment of the aircraft. We will also spend for the armaments and avionics, but these aircraft will certainly boost our capability. A second team will leave for the US in April for further inspection of the aircraft, which will be delivered to the country later this year, despite threats by Duterte to tone down security relations with Washington over continued criticism of his human rights record in connection with the ongoing war on drugs. Close to 6,000 people have been killed in legitimate police operations against illegal drugs and more than 3,000 others slain in drug-related incidents blamed on vigilantes, according to official police records. Before activating an aviation regiment, the Army relied on the Philippine Air Force for transporting troops and supplies, evacuating frontline casualties and supporting ground operations. The Air Force operates a variety of Bell Combat Utility Helicopters, mounting light machine guns to support ground operations, MD-500 Light Attack Helicopters, and Sikorsky Helicopters to deliver airstrikes. The Air Force has also started using its F-A-50 Light Fighters to drop bombs on rebel positions, in addition to AV-10 Bronco turboprop planes. We could have acquired six C-12 planes for the Army, but one plane went to the Philippine Navy which is also building up its aviation unit the Army colonel said, adding that naval aviation has two brand new Augusta Westland AW-159 Wildcat anti-submarine helicopters. In the future, we will also be acquiring brand new light attack helicopters, armed reconnaissance helicopters and multi-purpose medium lift helicopters. These assets will enable the Philippine Army to conduct a better array of aviation operations to support ground forces and be more responsive in the archipelagic setting in the defense posture he added. Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxon Jr. has cited the increasing U.S. military aid to keep the Visiting Forces Agreement FA, which the president has threatened to abrogate due to the revocation of the U.S. visa of a close political ally and former National Police Chief, Senator Ronald Beto de la Rosa, among other reasons. The U.S. plans to spend over $200 million in 2020 to 2021, providing aircraft, training, equipment, and construction for the AFP, Armed Forces of the Philippines, and more than $45 million in FMF, foreign military financing locks and said at last week's Senate inquiry on the possible impact of the termination of the FA. He said the Duterte administration has received a total of $554.55 million in terms of security assistance from the U.S. from 2016 to 2019, including $267.75 million in foreign military financing for the procurement of defense articles. In addition, under the FA, the Philippines is able to receive after-sales servicing in the form of maintenance packages that increase the article's value and lifespan, he said, adding, without the FA, the U.S. Departments of State and Defense will be hard put to get funds from the U.S. Congress for FMF and other defense assistance programs to the Philippines. Loxon also noted that the FA allows the U.S. to provide a total package approach on defense articles that would be compatible with equipment, assets, and systems that are already in The AFP's current military equipment, assets and systems are largely patterned from and or provided by the U.S. Although there are criticisms that the U.S. is using the Philippines as a dumping ground for its obsolete and mothballed aircraft, vessels and other military equipment, Washington has now seen the need to provide better and brand new equipment to its treaty ally to enhance its maritime domain awareness capability. In the last two years, the U.S. has transferred Scan Eagle drones and C-130 mounted intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance ISR, equipment, in addition to installing coastal radar stations in the southern Philippines to monitor movements of small and faster boats used by Abu Sayyaf militants in cross-border kidnappings in Malaysian waters. Senior Defense and Foreign Affairs Department officials have supported moves to revisit and review the legal agreements with the U.S. that allow its troops in Philippine soil instead of scrapping the arrangements. The officials believe the benefits from the VFA outweigh the costs of hosting U.S. forces in the country.